Borders Books was an American multinational book and music retailer that opened in 1971 and closed in 2011. If you've clicked onto this video, then you know what today is. It's Throwback Thursday. Every Thursday, I'll be releasing a new video of an old video that I did before. These new videos are longer and have more detail than the ones before. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you get notified of my latest video. Be sure to leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video. Thanks for watching. Borders began as an independent used bookstore in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The shop was founded in 1971 by Lewis and Tom Borders. The first Borders bookshop opened at 209 South State Street in Ann Arbor in 1971. Serving the bustling academic community of the University of Michigan and Ann Arbor's smaller colleges, the store held its own and became a popular neighborhood hangout. Within the next several years, the Borders Brothers opened two more bookstores in Michigan, one in Atlanta, and another in Indianapolis. In addition, Lewis and Tom started a wholesaling business they called BIS, Book Inventory Systems, which experienced healthy growth. Toying with the idea of a superstore, the brothers opened their first prototype large-scale retail store in 1985. Its success and the rise of similar competing stores set the retail book industry on its ear. The superstore model shifted sales from small indoor mall-based chain stores and independent booksellers to the new chain superstores. By 1988, with their five Midwest bookstores and BIS's bustling service numbering 14 book clients, the Brothers Enterprise was bringing in a net income of $1.9 million from sales of $32.3 million, but the Brothers wanted to expand in a big way. Robert Di Romaldo, who was named President and Chief Executive in 1989, opened 14 new stores in the next three years. Within a few short years, Di Romaldo had turned Borders into a household name in the Midwest. Analysts considered Borders the premier book superstore chain of the 1990s. By 1992, Borders had quadrupled its size and was beginning the complicated process of going public. Around the same time, the retailer attracted the attention of the huge Kmart Corporation, which had bought Walden Books in 1984 and was looking to expand its book retailing segment even further. In October of 1992, Lewis and Tom Borders sold their business, though they remained investors, and Borders became a wholly owned subsidiary of Kmart. In 1991, the previous year, Borders had started integrating music and movies into some of its stores. Kmart instituted several changes in 1993, including modernizing cash registers, a human resources department, formal training programs for employees, and the introduction of music to the store's stock. In August of 1994, Borders and sibling Walden Books formed a new company called Borders Group Inc. with plans to eventually break free from Kmart. By the end of the year, Borders had acquired five CD superstores and one Planet Music outlet. The company went on to add four Planet stores and 32 new Borders superstores. In addition to its unique state-of-the-art inventory and ordering system, Borders employees were full-time and college-educated, and all were tested for their knowledge of literature and music prior to hiring. Additionally, the bookstore chain prided itself on first-rate customer service, offering patrons a wide range of services from locating out-of-print titles to community activities like children's storytelling hours and poetry readings. Rounding out Borders offerings were growing varieties of alternative education and information media from videos to CD-ROMs, a relaxing and comfortable environment that encouraged customers to linger. 
And who could forget those espresso bars? An industry first that was quickly copied by competitors. Porter's espresso bars grew from a store add-on. For me personally, I liked Borders books better than Barnes & Noble. Maybe I'm just biased, but I always felt that Borders had a nicer atmosphere compared to Barnes & Noble. The Borders Superstore prototype in 1996 was 30,000 square feet of space, substantially larger than major competitor Barnes & Noble's Megastore, averaging 128,000 book titles and about 57,000 pre-recorded music titles at an initial cost of $2.6 million. In 2003, Borders had 1,249 stores using the Borders and Walden Books names. In 2004, Borders reached an agreement with Starbucks subsidiary Seattle's Best Coffee to operate cafes in its domestic superstores under the Seattle Best Brand name. In March of 2007, Borders Group announced it would scale down the number of Walden Books outlets it had by half to about 300 by 2008. In February of 2006, the company launched a loyalty program called Borders Rewards. In contrast to a membership from Barnes & Noble, which was a paid-for membership that entitled customers to discounts, Borders Rewards was a free program with discount coupons and the ability to earn store credit for purchases. The last year that Borders made a profit was in 2006. Its yearly income dropped by $1 billion over the next four years. In March of 2008, Borders Group announced the intention to sell the chain because of financial difficulties. Borders Books was rumored to have approached Barnes & Noble in hopes of a buyout. The chain was in debt, having increased its financial instability by borrowing $42.5 million. On February 16, 2011, the company announced that it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, listing $1.27 billion in assets and $1.29 billion in debts in its filing. The company had announced the liquidation and closing of 226 stores. The Borders Group announced on July 1, 2011, that it had found a bidder, Direct Brands, that would acquire the assets for $215 million and the assumption of $220 million in debt. A group of Borders creditors rejected the Direct Brands takeover bid in July of 2011. Borders filed for an auction and the motion was approved by a judge. However, the bid deadline expired on July 17th without a bidder. United States bankruptcy judge approved a petition to liquidate. This resulted in the company converting their Chapter 11 case to Chapter 7. On July 22, 2011, Borders started closing its remaining 399 stores with a phased rollout. Business operations ceased in September of 2011. Covering the economy now, Rhode Islanders will soon have one last place to find that next good read. Borders is closing all of its remaining stores as early as Friday, and the liquidation could be complete by September the 30th. The 40-year-old company was unable to find a buyer willing to pull it out of bankruptcy. Borders has 399 stores left, including several in Rhode Island and... So what are some of your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Be sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.